Hey, I'm Will Bartlett, and in today's Premiere Pro tutorial brought to you by Storyblocks, I'm going to show you two ways of adjusting the audio level in a video edit in order to have your music track sit at a nice volume underneath your voiceover audio. The first way is the normal way, which is by using the pen tool and manually creating adjustment points for where you want the audio to change. And the second way is using the Essential Sound Panel to automatically do the work for you. So let's dive into Premiere Pro and get started. All right, so I'm in Premiere Pro and I have a 1080p sequence created. This one will be for working with the pen tool. And then I have the exact same sequence duplicated and this one will be for working with the Essential Sound Panel. It has voiceover, a music track, and then some clips. Everything I found from storyblocks.com will unmute the audio. You'll notice that it's very difficult to hear the voiceover. The video clips we're going to be using today are stock footage clips found on storyblocks.com. They make it really easy to find stock footage for all your video editing needs. So naturally what you do is you'd go over and grab the pen tool, and then on the music track, right where the voiceover starts, you'd make a couple points on each track, right at the beginning and right at the end, and then you'd go back to your regular tool and you drag this down to let's say around minus 18 or 20. And the result of doing that will be when it's playing, once it reaches the voiceover, the music will drop in volume, which makes room for the voiceover to be heard. The video clips we're going to be using today are stock footage clips found on storyblocks.com. They make it really easy to find stock footage for all your video editing needs. So by using the pen tool to create some keyframes in the volume line, it can be very effective to adjust your audio in the way you want it. However, it can take a long time to do this, especially if you have multiple different spots in your edit. So for your first one, you'd need all of these keyframes to be there. And then you'd have to add more keyframes with the pen tool for each additional section. And just a quick tip, if you're on your regular selection tool, if you hold control on the PC or command on the Mac and hold your mouse over the volume line, it'll change to the plus symbol. And that means you can click and create a keyframe without going to the pen tool. And also, if you want to move them like I did before, all you have to do is select one, then hold shift in your keyboard, select the other one, then let go of shift. And then now that both are selected, you can click and hold one and drag it to where you want. Like I mentioned, if you're only making four or eight keyframes, it's not going to take very long. That's probably the way you want to go. But if you have to make many, many different keyframes over your entire edit, there is a better way to do it. And it's done completely automatically and it saves you a lot of time. All right, now let's go to our 1080p audio ducking sequence. We'll unmute the audio. And this time, instead of manually creating the keyframes, let's go to Window, Essential Sound, and make sure that's open. I already have that open over here, so we'll go to Essential Sound. And this is a relatively new panel in Premiere Pro. It's only been out for a few releases, and it's pretty powerful to speed up your workflows when editing. The idea here is you want to tell Premiere Pro what audio you're working with. On track one, I have some dialogue as my voiceover, so I'm going to tell Premiere that that's dialogue. And then I will select the music track and tell Premiere that that is music. And then with making sure that your music track is selected, in the Essential Sound panel, you'll notice that there's a section called Ducking. Let's turn that on. And then we'll set the sensitivity to 6. Then for the duck amount, we'll set that to roughly the same as what we had before, which was minus 18.5. And we'll have a fade on either side of around 800 milliseconds. And what that represents is the length of time between the keyframes. Now that those settings are in place, we want to make sure that we're going to duck against the dialogue that we selected before. Then we'll scroll down a bit and hit the Generate Keyframes button. And then on our music track, it automatically created the keyframes for me. And let's give that a listen. The video clips we're going to be using today are stock footage clips found on Storyblocks.com. I'll show you how fast this can be if I duplicate this, let's say, three times. And then now that we have three voiceover parts and a music track, let's go to Essential Sound Panel, turn on Ducking, change our duck amount to minus 18.5, scroll down and hit Generate Keyframes. Let's say you were working on a much larger project and you had a lot of dialogue parts, a lot of different music tracks, you would definitely not want to go the old route of using the pen tool and manually editing in all of the changes in the volume one by one. So by incorporating the Essential Sound Panel in your workflow, it can really save you a lot of time. 
Okay, that brings us to the end of this Premiere Pro tutorial brought to you by Storyblocks on how to adjust your audio levels manually using the pen tool and automatically using the Essential Sound Panel. My name is Will Bartlett and we'll see you next time.